you should have received a packet from Mr. Hill that looks like this. And maybe right off the bat, you'll notice that it lists the medieval period as spanning from the year 600 to 1400. And you'll note that that's different than your other packet. Um, something to keep in mind is these historical time periods weren't decided during the time period. Like, what time period are we in right now? Is anyone deciding that? No. They'll decide that hundreds of years from now when they label our time period and they decide what years it is. So this is a little bit up for discussion. Um, that is approximately correct. Um, so looking at the next page, um, it lists early music as the year 600 to the year 800. And here's an important name. Pope Gregory I is credited with collecting plain chant songs used in ceremonies in the Catholic Church. And his goal was to create a universal style of church music. Soon after, a type of plain chant called Gregorian chant, named after Pope Gregory I, emerged. The style of this music is called monophonic because it consists of a solo melody. And that's really similar to what you heard with the music of Hildegard yesterday when you listened to that Kyrie. Um, around 800 AD, the French emperor Charlemagne decided that they needed to invent a form of music notation called neumes. Now, taking a look at this next page, it talks about how to read neumes. So um, you can see that it has a lot of the same elements that you would see on our normal music. But like we mentioned the other day, it's only got four lines and the neumes are square and some of them are stacked up like on top of each other. You note that the lyrics are in Latin, just like we talked about all the music of the church and the readings of the church, everything spoken in the church was in Latin. So if you can think of ever having been bored in a church service, maybe some of you have never been bored in a church service. I have been bored in a church service. Imagine how much worse it would have been if literally the entire church service, every word, every song were in a language that you didn't understand. And people still went, which is absolutely amazing. So Latin is the language. That is the language of the church. You need to remember that. Um, it has a little place where it says, listen to Gregorian chant and learn more about reading neumes here. And I'm actually going to put a link to that um, below this video so that you can listen to somebody who is going to be um, singing something like this while the music is going by, just so you get an idea of what it sounds like and how they're reading it. Okay, the next little part says, now let's meet some medieval musicians. This is where I really like this packet because we've already talked a lot about sacred music, which is the music of the church. But now we're going to talk about secular music. Because remember, we discussed yesterday that the secular music was quite popular. Like people were really into it. People liked making the music. People loved hearing the music. So let's learn a little bit more about what that is about. So the first guy on here says, hello, I am a minstrel. A minstrel was a traveling musician who played dance music, sometimes for nobility, but also in pubs and taverns. Sometimes those individuals were also called bards. So a minstrel and a bard, those are the same guys. Um, and they, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Does that ever happen to you? It's really strange talking to a computer and there's no one else in this room. I apologize. It's getting late at night, actually, when I'm recording this. Um, so a minstrel plays in pubs and taverns, plays for nobility, travels around. I think it sounds kind of fun. Um, okay, so the next guy on the list here is a troubadour. A troubadour was a poet and composer who mostly um, performed for nobles. And their music generally centered around themes of courtly love. So we talked about how um, it's a lot of times love songs. I often hear the term minstrel and the term troubadour um, used interchangeably. I, don't, I think there are probably some differences, but um, that's pretty much it. Okay, the next guy on here says, I am a goliard. 
I travel around singing rather rude or satirical songs, usually without instrumental accompaniment. And singing without in- accompaniment is called a cappella. I think a lot of you probably know that. But this guy. So literally what he would do is just barge into places and without even carrying an instrument along with him would just start singing things that were rude or would start singing things that would like make fun of people. I actually think that sounds kind of fun. It's maybe not good. It's a good way to get beat up depending on where you are. I guess I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. So the last guy we got here, I am a jongler. A jongler were more all-around entertainers doing juggling, acrobatics, dancing, and singing, and they were usually from poor or lower class families. That sounds fun too, but I think you have to be able to juggle, and I don't have that kind of coordination to be honest. All right, so last page on this packet, the characteristics of medieval music. So you heard this first one in the macho example that you listened to, the second example from yesterday. It's a drone, which is a simple accompaniment, which is like usually the first and fifth of the scale played on a string instrument or something that's just holding out these notes while somebody is singing over top of it. Um, There are what are called modal melodies. Medieval music favored a kind of scale called a mode. The intervals are different than the normal scales that you're used to hearing, and it causes it to sound kind of haunting. So a number of you on your papers mentioned that you thought it did sound kind of like um, Middle Ages, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit kind of stuff. The, the reason it sounds that way to you is because they're doing their music based on what are called modes, which are scales that sound kind of haunting that way. And then finally, um, repetitive rhythms. And so those could be simple chants and simple rhythms, and they're repeated over and over again um, to drive kind of the dance beat to it. Now, you didn't get to hear a lot of the dance beat because what you listened to yesterday was church music, and there would for sure not be dancing in the church. Definitely not dancing. Like, you'd get kicked out for that. Um, or worse, I don't know. Um, but secular music where you've got minstrels and troubadours who are traveling around the countryside, entertaining people, going into pubs and taverns and and just generally um, being happy and, and being entertaining. Dancing is definitely fine in those instances. So that gets you through this medieval music packet. Some of these elements on this packet are going to appear on the review sheet that you're going to do um, at the end of today's Google form. And so um, make sure you have this out as well as the other papers um, so that you're able to complete that. Okay, next up, we're going to talk more about troubadours.